Tech Love Live at Open Source Bridge. I'm Cami Chaos, and this is Paula Holm Jensen. Hi. And you gave a talk yesterday with JP? Yes, and we talked about uh, open source licensing and issues uh, that can come up with uh, open source software and uh, providing services and putting stuff on the internet and blog comments and all those kind of things. Why do lawyers fear and hate both <laughs> open source? It's not always both, but just in general. When you're in law school, you're taught that things are set up so there's a winner and a loser. Mm -hmm. And even if you are supposedly fighting for the little guy, that's usually trying to make the big guy the loser and the little guy the winner. And setting things up like that in opposition to each other, I think, is not what happens, is not what uh, the ideal of open source is. And so it confuses lawyers. It's like, like the uh, tagline for Creative Commons licensing, which mm -hmm. says some rights reserved. Mm -hmm. well, lawyers look at that and say, no, 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 it's got to be all rights reserved. <laughs> it's all or nothing. Yes. And it's, that's just the natural impulse to set things up that way. And um, when you're presented with a system that intentionally doesn't do that, mm -hmm. um, it confuses lawyers. And uh, lawyers don't like being confused, and so they resist something and, and fear. Typically, if you've got a smart lawyer who's open-minded, you can explain it to them. Mm -hmm. um, and there's much less resistance than there was even 5, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I asked JP yesterday, and I think it's worth repeating. I thought it was interesting to see you guys giving a talk about open source, because the way I've always looked at contracts is that mm -hmm. they're all out there, and you don't necessarily go and rewrite them. I think it's the same kind of thing. You take the thing that's already there, and you remake it for your own purposes. Mm -hmm. So is contract law kind of a more open source thing? That Not the end product, not what you have people signing, but but what you pull from? Lawyers definitely borrow from each other mm -hmm. all the time, and so yes, we will see what's out there, um, you know. And there actually there are some fights about that occasionally, because uh, lawyers will say, uh, usually in a litigation standpoint, the the big class action suits or something, you stole my language, and this is how I've managed to sue the asbestos industry and get millions of dollars. You know that that's the kind of thing. So occasionally, even lawyers get upset about it. But yes, we we borrow from each other and borrow from things we don't even know where they come from mm -hmm. um, all the time. And some of that, it's important to do because you're following the precedent. And uh, the law itself, most of it, because it comes out of governments, has to be open. Um, and there have been fights about that. Uh, somebody puts together a building code, and then a city adopts it. Well, and then the, the organization that put together the building code wants to sell copies of the building code. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, that's been adopted into law. I can copy from that because it's, it's now, okay. it's public, it has mm -hmm. to be available for everybody. What was your first, excuse me, what was your first contact with open source? Well, my first official contact um, was when I was down in the Bay Area shortly after law school and open source, you know, about 15 years ago, when open source started coming up more often mm -hmm. in um, business transactions. And um, at that time, there was far more fear and hatred and, you know, you must promise that you've never touched any open source if I'm going to buy your company mm -hmm. kind of thing. But my actual first connection was um, about in 1984. Mm -hmm. I was living in Boston, hanging out with a bunch of guys from MIT who were doing stuff with Richard Stallman. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, somebody explained to me what open source was and what uh, the GNU foundation, I don't know if the foundation was built yet, but, but GNU and the GPL was. And so I started um, thinking about it back then. So I've actually been thinking about it in the back of my mind, even if I haven't been active with it for, what's that, 25 years? <laughs> How did you get involved with the OS Bridge um, conference? Specifically with the conference, I have to give all that to uh, JP, who's actually sitting out uh, in the audience oh, at the moment. Hi, JP. <laughs> um, he, uh, we had met earlier uh, through, actually, probably through Twitter mm -hmm. contact. Oh, can and, you give us your Twitter uh, name? Yes, it is uh, pretty unimaginative uh, at the moment. I may change it at some point, but it's my initials, PHJ underscore PDX. And uh, so JP and I met and talked just in general about, you know, the legal community and open source and kind of some of the interesting resources that are around here. And um, once he had put together the uh, pitch to be uh, at OS Bridge, mm -hmm. um, he asked me if I'd uh, come with him. Very, very cool. Yeah, well, I, got to see a, I got to see part of the question and answer part yesterday. I kind of 
Good, oh, good. It was group, fun. But yeah. It was interesting. All right. Yeah. It was really good to talk to you. Great it was nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining us. All right.